I want to welcome Jason Chance to the program. He's going to be performing with the Hit Men of Country at the Barkley Irvine Theater, and it's going to be coming up on November 10th, this Friday. And welcome to the program, Jason. Glad to be here. Very excited. So tell me a little bit about your background, how you kind of got started in the whole music business, and we'll try to jump into the folks on the Hit Men of Country. Absolutely. So, uh, well, I have what is, uh, I live in Nashville and I'm actually a Nashville native. That's uh, a little unusual for musicians here. Uh, I guess it would be sort of like when actors move to Southern California, you know, most of the folks are not actually from there, but it's a, it's a similar thing uh, for me, except I actually grew up in the business. I'm a, uh, a third generation uh, musician here in Nashville. My, my grandfather, Lightning Chance, was the uh, staff bass player at the Grand Ole Opry for a long time in the 50s and 60s. And my dad, uh, Barry, was a pretty prominent guitar player, played with Jimmy Buffett for a long time in the 70s and 80s and uh, a bunch of other artists. And so I just sort of grew up in it and uh, have had a chance to work with some amazing artists through the years. And uh, that's why this this Hitman of Country idea that we'll get to is uh, such a, an exciting thing. Yeah. So um, did when you started out, did you ever see yourself kind of like doing this kind of thing or were you, you do have the dreams like a lot of folks have of I'm going to be a, a hit country singer. I'm going to go out there and tour. I'm going to write all my own stuff. Did, did you do that for a little while before you started this route? Well, I didn't personally, but mainly because my family, I always like to tell people we're sort of. Um, sort of the behind the scenes guys and, and gals. We, uh, uh, the folks that make the music in Nashville, it works a little bit differently than a lot of the other genres in that, uh, you know, it's a genre that's very focused on the solo artist. So mm -hmm. uh, the folks that are involved in the record making and the touring are sometimes uh, sort of in the background, but that was uh, uh, coming from a family that did it that way. It's just sort of the way we knew how to do it. And uh, as far as, uh, I guess as far as like aspirations, what you most most of the time musicians, especially instrumental musicians here in town, your your goal is to like, you know, get that big uh, touring gig with a major artist or or it could be for a lot of folks like myself working in the recording scene, doing uh, record production and, and playing on albums and, and things like that, uh, but uh, have certainly been around uh, a lot of folks that that a lot of my friends are, are artists and some of which who have like made it onto that next level and some who do, who don't for whatever reason it's just like any other field you know the stars didn't align well what's it like what was it like growing up in a household that was just full of music like you know generations of that what's it like kind of coming up in that world well uh to to put it i guess the most politely uh most of the folks in my family sort of had i guess I won't say a cynical view, but a little bit, uh, a little bit of a uh, uh, a more muted perspective on the whole thing because uh, we we see how the sausage is made, as they say. <laughs> uh, so it's not always like uh, puppies and rainbows all the time. We have uh, uh, you know bumps and bruises and things that you deal with behind the scenes, like political things. Uh, and I'm not, I don't mean like national politics, but just the uh, the inner politics, like in an office, basically you, okay. you, you deal with a lot of that. And uh, so so. Uh, my grandfather and my dad were both very much, uh, they were like down players of, of the whole, like, you're going to get to do some cool things, but, you know, don't let it go to your head kind of thing. This is just what we do for a living. You know, it's how we feed our families. So it's it's been more of a, it's kind of like any other job, I guess, except it is a pretty cool job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people have that vision of, of performers if they're not the star, if they're the center of the stage, then they didn't quite make it. Then they're not, they don't have that fulfillment, right? But you know a, entire generations of your own family who have like had an enjoyable career, have loved what they do, and they didn't have to be the star, right? Absolutely. And and that was something that I remember uh, the first time I was ever on tour with a major artist and I, I got fired. I've never been fired from anything before and I was so upset about it. And uh, the first person I called was my dad. And he said, listen, you're going to be doing what you do long after that artist has come and gone and done their thing. And, and maybe you don't get the uh, the spotlight and the the glitz and glamour and fortune and fame. But but uh, it was a good perspective. It was a good little talk that he gave me. He's like, hey, we've all been there. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to do this till you retire, probably, you know. What did you learn from that? Did you learn like uh, about getting fired? I mean, there's a, that's a uh, um, very um, humiliating, I mean, not humiliating, but a humbling kind of experience, right? To be, oh my gosh. 
Well, it, I was, you know, I was a little younger then. And I, I think the big thing that I learned from it is things change in this business. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I guess it's the same in, in any creative media, you know, people come and go and, and there are going to be times when, when things just don't work out. And when they don't, then you just have to like, you know, keep your chin up and keep going and, and find the next opportunity. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's definitely the lesson I learned from that and, and should have known, but you know, you're, you, like you said, your pride's a little hurt when something doesn't work out when you think it's like the perfect opportunity, you know? All right. Well, speaking of opportunities, folks are going to have the opportunity to see you at the Hit Men of Country over at the Barkley, and that's coming up on the 10th. Tell us a little bit about the show, what it's all about. Well, this is a really exciting thing. Uh, a couple of years ago, when it was just an idea, an old friend of mine named Doug Carter, who is part of the group and a uh, terrific piano player and singer and artist in his own right, uh, Doug has been the, the music director with uh, the great country singer Lee Greenwood for the past couple of decades. And, and I had worked with, with Lee back in the day some. And Doug called me and said, I've got this idea about doing shows with basically the, the folks that we've grown up playing with in different bands, but, but don't have the spotlight necessarily. But we're going to go out and we're going to perform the music of these iconic artists that we've all either worked with on tour or played on their records or some combination of the two and and sort of share our story a bit while also being able to to play and sing the songs that, that folks are certainly very familiar with and and mm -hmm. so we've got a great group of guys it's 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 been very fun so far the last few shows we've done and i'm super excited about irvine i love southern california i haven't been in several years so i kind of miss going back this is a good time of year to go too it's a good time of year to go welcome back um so it's kind of a songbook of all the greats and also the stories of the making kind of like how like you said earlier how the sausage is made kind of thing Absolutely. And, and we share some stories that, uh, you know, you would never hear of some how things work uh, behind the scenes. We interact with the with the crowd quite a bit uh, as we're sort of telling our stories and, and singing these songs. And uh, I've, I've got uh, I've got one doozy in particular uh, about Jimmy Buffett, who we just lost recently and, and uh, was somebody my dad spent a lot of time with. I heard a lot of stories when I was a kid about the stuff that was going on back then. I've got a pretty family friendly uh, story I can share at the show that's, <laughs> that always gets a lot of laughs. You don't do a song like Margarita Will without having a few stories behind it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. So um, have you ever been, this, I'm just going to throw this out there, have you ever been on stage and you say, hey, you know what, I think my grandfather, I think my father, I think one of my family members did the original recording of this song. Have you ever like done that on stage? Happens all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, some of the bands I play with around here in Nashville that do a lot of the older, like classic country, the, the, there's uh, there's some stories sometimes I share with crowds about, yeah, this song, you know this song, but uh, and, and I'll tell them some factoids about it, and the, they'll be looking at me funny, and I'll be, you may ask why I know these interesting facts about this song. It's because the guy that was playing the upright bass on this Hank Williams song or Marty Robbins or Ray Price was my grandfather. And, and so it, that's always a, a little cool connection that the audience gets to feel like they're a little, got a little personal connection to the story, you know. But what's it like carrying that history with you, you know, from generations? And, and do, you, do you do you have that like feeling of like you're that you're you kind of are important person to carry those things forward? I love that you asked me this. This is something that uh, this is something that I've shared with a lot of people throughout my career. I've got I've got children of my own, and uh, all three of my older kids. I also have a five month old baby. My wife uh, and I have here at the house, so he's not quite ready for it yet. But my older <laughs> kids, they're they're all musicians in their own right, and and the approach that I took with them was very similar to what my family did with me. It was never pushed on them. Like I, I, I always gave it the option. I'll obviously support you and encourage you, but if you want to do something else, don't feel any pressure that you have to do this. And and when I was growing up, certainly there's internal pressure you feel when when you've got family members that have been a part of like very notable recordings or or tours or right. whatever. And uh, you know there is some you got to feel like you got to live up to it. Um, but but thankfully it was never. Uh, I always say my dad wasn't t-ball dad he wasn't that like uh overbearing parent at the little league game that's like in the middle of everything it was a little more hands-off 
and and sure, he, there, were, there, were, there were things he would show me or experiences that he would share, but it was, uh, I, I try to take the same approach. I think that's the best way with kids is to let them find their own way. And because I certainly was allowed to. Yeah. And I think if they see the joy in what you do, they can't help but see, wow, that look at look at what my father's experience, look at the, my grandfather's experience and, and see all that. And they can connect to that, whether they want to pursue that or not. That's that's up to them. Right. But absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I tell them, I don't know, do be a brain surgeon or something, you know, support your old man when he's old. You know, right, right. <laughs> so it's up to you, whatever you want to do. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I want to recap real quick. Hitman of Country, the Barclay Theater. What should people expect to see when they get in there? Uh, I've well, they're going to uh, quite honestly, they're going to see a show of, of top notch musicians that uh, you're going to hear songs that you recognize, and they're going to sound mostly like the record because a lot of the a lot of us either played on them on them or were on tour with the artists that did them for a long time, and you're going to hear you're going to it's a very uh, it's a fun light hearted show uh we like i said we we interact with the crowd quite a bit share stories it's a it's a very laid back chill kind of vibe but it's going to be a fun night of music super excited about the barclay theater we've heard great things about the acoustics there and and what a great venue it is so it's a it's going to be a fun time friday night you will love it i've been there before myself it's a great place to play friday november 10th 8 p.m irvine barclay theater the hit men of country and jason chance thank you so much for joining us today thank you sir it was my pleasure